Hello everyone. This is Sumit Sawla. I'm product manager at PayPal. Thanks for joining this webinar and wish you all a great World Product Day. Thank you Product School for giving me this opportunity to share my learnings with you all. A little bit about my background. I have done my bachelor's in computer engineering from University of Mumbai. Then I came to US to pursue my master's at Georgia Tech. I, after my graduation, I had a strong interest in mobiles. Hence I joined BlackBerry as a software developer and worked there for a couple of years. After that, following my passion, I joined PayPal mobile team and I worked here as well on web and mobile application development for a few years. During my engineering journey, I found an immense interest in solving customer problem and at the same time, providing a business value. Hence, I joined uh, product management. I'm working as a product manager for PayPal Identity. Here, I look after identity for all the PayPal and C mobile apps and also looking into passwordless login options, which is the topic of this presentation. So let's get started. Today, I'm going to cover three things. Why login experience matters and why it is one of the important aspect of any product. What are different login options? How they compare to each other? And what are some of the recommendations? Finally, I will summarize all the things that we learned today and I will share what is the present and future of login looks like. So why login experience matters? To serve our customers, first thing we need to do is to identify them. We need to know them, we need to authenticate them before we show any product experience. That's true for a checkout as well. As all of you know, when you are shopping, first thing that you need to provide once you add item to the cart and start checking out is login. So as you can see the flow here, as a PayPal customer, they when they click on PayPal checkout, first thing PayPal asks is login. Once the user identifies themselves, then we present the billing and funding information. And then only user is able to place the order. So as you can see, login is the first step. And that's it's very crucial for PayPal's revenue. It's not just a revenue because it's not uh, it's even important for the repeat transactions. So if customer likes your experience, end-to-end -end experience, they will come to your product again and they will do more transaction and that will generate more revenue. It will generate uh, like a net new activations, like new users the month and it will increase your monthly and daily active users. It also helps retaining and uh, stopping the churn rate because if the user, for example, they forgot password, they most likely, they try for, they, they will try for sometimes but after that, they will just give up and then they will drop from your product. Hence, to summarize, login is very crucial for any product experience. What are different types of login options? In nutshell, there are three types of login or three types to authenticate user. First, knowledge. This is something the user knows, such as password, PIN, their personal information, their SSN, for example, those are considered as a knowledge-based log login. Second, inherence. This is something what user is. So this is their identity, their biometric, their face. That's considered as the inherence. And lastly, what something that user has or something that user carries with them. And that is nothing but like a mobile phone or the device that they actually carry with them. And possession of that device, for example, passport. Passport is a physical, uh, is a physical uh, product. It is the identity for you, your, right? So similarly, 
phone is the nowadays the number one factor for the possession so there is a huge issues with the knowledge based authentication such as passwords and it's a, it's a two fold problem those are le- less secure and at the same time they are not very user friendly users always end up using a simple passwords for some products which are easy to guess for attackers also as users use passwords across multiple websites or apps they end up using same password across uh, those products as well they lead to billions of passwords uh, comprom- getting compromised yearly and uh, you you see the reports about data leaks and the passwords or the personal information that is leaked online once the password is compromised it, it compromises other accounts as well and lastly it can be exploited via social engineering as this is something the you it's it's mind in mind of the user for example admin users there are always some tactics that attacker use to get the password and that would compromise the security of your company and product second it's not user friendly users keep forgetting password all the time and i know you have all been there where you try to access something and you forget the password and it's a friction to actually like uh, recover the password also to increase the security if users create a different passwords for different accounts it end up end up compromising their convenience and and very less people actually still use password managers uh, which generates auto generates those complex password it's still a cumbersome because if you don't have access to this password manager you are basically uh, locked also it is difficult to type passwords on mobile phones and it is one of the leading reason for calling customer care lastly after all of this the password success rate for your product is only 80% hence going back to my previous slide as login is very important and if but something like a password has a, a success rate of only 80% or even lower than that then that means that those users are not able to access your product so what's the solution solution is to go passwordless to move away from knowledge based such as friction based authentication to more position and inherence factor which i discussed before compared to password they are more frictionless so let's dive into each of that so for each login option what i will do is i will cover how the login options are that uh, login experience works in the mobile apps and how it is works in web and what are some of the points that you need to consider while implementing that login option either for mobile app or a web i will also cover how this login options compare against each other on security convenience and availability so regarding biometrics most of you will be familiar with the face id or touch id and fingerprint authentication that's available on most of the ios and android phones now security is high because it is something that user need to carry and something that basically identify you as a unique personality it is secure convenience wise lately as you all, as we all been to uh, to the situation where we are wearing mask and it becomes convenience wise it becomes difficult if you try to use your face or a fingerprint when we compare biometric options on the web it is still available in very limited fashion it just the last fall apple announced support for a biometric authentication on the web browser and android has this features for a couple of years but as uh, as it's very available on very small number of the websites such as ebay so availability wise it is low to medium it's only available on mobile browser by the way so uh, and desktop browser support as you know the devices that comes with the fingerprint is very less it's very minimal uh, availability and it's not available on the browsers all the browsers yet security is high because it's backed by a fido standard and 
convenience, as I mentioned, uh, because of the current situation where we wear masks and sometimes we have some uh, things in our hand and we can't use our fingerprint. So from that perspective, it is medium convenience. Moving next, uh, this login option is more focused on the position side. So this is the mobile phone or computer that you actually carry with you. And in terms of the mobile apps, uh, as you all know, the all the like most of the iPhone and Android devices are locked by by a device security by iOS and Android, and it is as secure as uh, as you might have heard about that. Even FBI was not able to crack uh, the the iPhone security, right? And they were not able to unlock the account. Hence, you it's you will see that most of the mobile apps they actually after the initial authentication they don't ask for any password and they just auto log in the user. And this is same thing the PayPal has done when you launch the PayPal app after our initial uh, first time login we try best to not ask you for any password or even a biometric login, and we just auto log in the user. And it is widely available for all the mobile apps, mostly only some limited bank apps that are still not uh, embracing this, but most of the apps are using this. So availability of this is high. Security is high, as I mentioned, uh, as part of the FBI example. And then convenience is also high. User doesn't do anything. They don't need to even uh, basically, uh, swipe a finger. When it compares to web, again here uh, the web browsers uh, to identify the user, you are still dependent on the, on the cookie, and um, the same kind of developed device security. It's not available. Also, as an app, as a web application, you don't know if the mobile phone or the laptop is locked. So. You are you won't be able to just auto log in the user by just based on the device security. Hence, the solution here that some companies use is using machine learning. Using machine learning, they try to identify the user. Availability is a medium because as for smaller companies, they need to invest in the machine learning to get benefit of this uh, feature. Security is made too high because again, uh, when it comes to the web, the people use incognito browsers. And also they use public computers, so it is difficult to uh, secure in some, such, such circumstances. The convenience is same as high as mobile apps because user doesn't do anything. As you can see in the example of the PayPal checkout, when the user click on the PayPal checkout, we just show the uh, spinner that we recognize you and we are taking you to the checkout. So no action needed from the user side. Third login option is about social and third party logins. This is also widely available uh, for most of the mobile apps and the web. The way it works is the applications allow, uh, they depend on the identity of the popular companies such as Google, Apple, and uh, Facebook. And uh, user can use login with Google or login with Facebook to access your product. As you can see, the experience is user is clicking on login with Google, and then user will log, uh, log in to the Google, and they are automatically logged into your app. Similar experience possible on the web, where user can select any of the options that I mentioned. And uh, in this case, I'm showing the experience for the sign in with Apple. And uh, as you can see here, user is when they use this option the Apple will basically show the native experience uh, to like log in the user using the Apple ID. And then the user is automatically logged in for, in, in this case, the Kayak account. One main problem with this option is the browsers, they delete third party cookies for the security and the privacy reasons. And because of that, it's possible when the user, they try to use say example, Google or Facebook sign in, uh, we they they still need to enter a password again. So the security of this option it is depend on the security of the uh, the options that are the users is using. If for example, if your Google account is compromised or your Facebook Facebook account is compromised, it will end up end up uh, like 
compromising all other products as well hence from the security and convenience perspective it is medium to high and then uh, because of the dependency on the cookie availability pers- availability perspective it is high on the app side but low on the browser side the fourth option i want to talk about is the login via otp this is also very popular in some countries where user can use their uh, one time code that is sent to a sms and email to login to a product and in the mobile apps it's also a uh, user can some apps actually auto fill this code as well so as for user it is as simple as just typing the code or just uh, like using the auto fill hence the convenience and availability on mobile apps is high similar to the web user can either use sms or email otp and here the availability is high there is no uh, like a difference when it's compared to mobile app and convenience is medium to high because on the uh, browsers uh, the still this autofill of one time code via sms is not available widely and so users still need to type the code security perspective sms is still considered less secure and one more issue with the uh, sms is the cost the especially outside the us the sms is very expensive for example in the uk and europe the sms cost per sms is around 4 to 6 cent hence if we do this a lot at a volume it leads to a millions of dollars in cost last option i want to cover is web login using app or using mobile phone so so far as you as you have seen the login options available on the mobile app are more robust hence uh, one idea is to also use like uh, that to log into web and, and the experience will be something such as uh, user is trying to log into a web and if the same user has also logged into your mobile app you can actually send a notification on the mobile app and uh, user can actually log in to the web by clicking on the notification also in case of the whatsapp and some other apps uh, you can display the qr code on your brow- on the on your uh, web login a user can use the mobile app to scan the qr code and then they are logged in on the web so this really relies on the fact that uh, your users have a mobile apps and they are logged in onto your mobile app if those two conditions are met this is from security perspective it is very high secure because this something you carry as a device and then availability and convenience perspective uh, as it depends uh, on whether your uh, product has a uh, enough app penetration hence that's why the availability depends on that part and then convenience perspective uh, for example if your phone is not nearby it's like uh, leads to a convenience problem where you need to find the phone find the notification and then click on the notification so that's where it leads to to summarize we discuss what are the like different login option and especially when when it compares to like a most popular option which is password what are the problems uh, it's less secure and it's not user friendly secondly we went through all the different login option and the summary is that on the mobile app using the device security or and the biometrics is very robust options and you can use either of those to actually solve the login problems for your product on the web there is not a one thing that works for every product or every user and so uh, the short term a solution can be using third party logins such as google and facebook as most of the users have those accounts and we can uh, and that can be uh, useful also the email one time code can be or sms one time code is a convenient option as well uh, minus the cost with the sms from long term as your app penetration for your product increases you can use login via app as a method to 
like allow user to log in. Also, as the coverage for the web biometrics increases, that can be a good option as well. Lastly, if you really want to invest in, you can use machine learning to make the login seamless for your web products. What is the future option that I talked about? Uh, to use those options, uh, you still need to enter a password once because that's something you entered while you create the account at most of the sites and most of the products. Hence, to go truly passwordless, what we need to do is to eliminate password even at the onboarding. When the user onboards your product, we need to remove the password and instead use other methods such as app or biometrics to enroll user directly into those uh, like a seamless options so, so that we don't need to even use password like any time in the future. Hope my presentation helped you with uh, providing the broad picture at what are the different login experiences and how you can improve your web and mobile apps using some of these uh, techniques. Thank you for your time.